Another long one. Man, I've been home for 24 hours. I had to leave and go on a full six hour road trip again for the day today. Got back. Now, hopefully I'll be home long enough to get my stalls done in the barn. Man, full stampede when I came in the driveway. Two horses, two goats, a dog, and a bunch of chickens literally all came running out of my truck when I came in the driveway the other day. It's pretty funny. Quite the welcome. And uh, Chuck Manbox, the inbox is chock full with people making shares for the world to the world through me. So many. I don't know where to start. I just scroll down and there's hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of voices to be heard. It's amazing. Alright. Let's see what we got here. This one comes to the painting. Steve, I'm being helped greatly by your courage to create such a bold channel for us and the many stories from the people around the table. I wrote you over a year ago and told you my first encounter with Sasquatch and if and you read it on your channel. You do what you say you're gonna do. I like your rugged, honest approach and view, not to mention your awesome photographer and my, one of my passions. Thank you for the kind words, man. I'm an artist and photographer also, and for the most part have lived in the country, except the necessary stints I had to do in the Bay Area regarding my careers, one in criminal justice and the other in technology. I'm going to report my first encounter again so it matches my piece of art that I've included here. It's a sunny day in 53 on my family's ranch outside of Red Bluff, California. My little brother and I are walking across the Reeds Creek Bridge where we're going to go play fort. My brother ran over to the left side of the bridge and he was looking over the rail. I was on the right side hearing a rustling of bushes. I turned my head to look and there on the creek bed below was a juvenile male. He was lean, about six feet tall and had dark brown hair that was about two inches long. No hair on his dark face or hands. He had no sagittal crest. In 1953 no one was talking of real or really aware of these beings. So I was curious and amazed. We had eye contact and I could tell he was very intelligent and the sighting was about a minute long before he disappeared in plain sight. I remember having the feeling of disappointment because he slipped away before I could figure out what he was. I climbed down the bank and went over to where he had stood and actually looked over for footprints because I wanted to follow him into the woods. There were none. At dinner that night I shared my experience with my family. My father knew what I saw and told me he had experiences with them in Wisconsin where he was raised. No one ridiculed the subject then because it didn't have a tinfoil hat on yet. Since that day I've had other encounters. It started back up when I moved to the mountains in Trinity, California. I've been here for 20 years now and I have sightings on my property when I'm driving along the country roads. These encounters are random and I can happen and can happen in the day or at night. Sometimes they evaporate into thin air and other times not. I've interacted with them on two occasions, and that was on a paranormal level. For the most part, I just leave them alone. I tell them I'm not out raising hell in your forest, so don't raise, raise it with me in or out of my home. My Native American friends have warned me about letting them in my house. Well, I have news for them. Savvy comes and goes where he pleases. They give off a strong, sweaty straw smell, like a horse after it works up a sweat. The smell sometimes is in my garage or other rooms in my house. I don't have horses. I think it is I think it is like you and others say. It is either their way of letting you know they are there for a visit. It was good to hear you say that you just tell them you are hunting to feed your family and how that works for you and many others. By listening to the members of the round table and knowledge on yourself, I'm learning how to stay safe by learning their behavioral patterns. It was interesting that you shared with us about predators not warning you before they attack, but Sabe will let you know. I've not had experiences with aggression or predatory behavior from Sabe so far. I'm 79 now and understand when some of our members say, I feel safe when they're around. So do I. But I know things can change and that's life. If they ever do get aggressive, I would sell my property and move elsewhere. Someone asked me if I had, if I had to disclose their behavior in a paperwork, I should sell. If I should sell, not yet. Okay, wait, what's that second? Someone asked me if I had to disclose their behavior in the paperwork if I should sell. Not yet. I just know that I would not hang around to find out why they are pissed off. Their size is so big, and I always find it very intimidating. When they come on my property, it is through 
through a portal, which is between my walnut and cherry tree. I throw brush on it so I don't forget and walk through that area. Holy shit. I found out the portal moves as well. I had someone come out with electronic equipment and they said that they thought the reason for all the activity is due to an equifier that runs through my property. I also have lots of orbs and ghosts. Like you say, it's an interesting journey we're on. Steve, thanks so much for all the time you're giving this topic. You're the only one out there that is honest and to the point. Thanks for all to all the members of the round table for the comfort knowing I'm not alone. Luckily, I have two friends that have encounters as well and we each share and we share each other up. P.S. I agree with you, your political views as well. I'm a conservative Republican. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It amazes me the people that are in power of so much fear. I often wonder if the people that run all the countries have a false sense about their importance and that makes them feel powerful when they really are insecure and frightened and have to keep the game going to keep themselves pumped up. What a vicious and stressful way to live and they can't see through the delusion. Fools. So I can ramble. See, I can ramble too. Thanks, Steve. You have a long trip planned now, and I hope you I hope for you it is productive, enjoyable, and safe. Judy Benjamin. Judy, thank you so much for that share, and especially sharing your artwork. I'm gonna see if I can do the old uh hold it up to the camera thing here. It seems sometimes when I get attachments to the emails, my phone won't open. Like my phone will not open and play video or audio. I haven't a clue why. 99% of the emails I open are on my phone and I save, it to, I save it to a file on my phone in the notes. And then I have to try to go back when I, once I get online in the house, which obviously you guys all know I'm rarely there, right? And then it, uh, I have to open it up that way. But anyway, so here's, uh, here, is, here is Judy's artwork and what she saw. Check this out. be something else to see that stand there looking at you wouldn't it and she said that by the looks of that being it was a juvenile six feet lean how amazing is that I was at the back river again normally I take my quad down there but unfortunately the brand new quad is broken I don't know why it went into my truck fine up north and I just unloaded out of my truck and it doesn't want to go and then to top it up, to put a gate at the top of the road here to get down to the riverbank here. I don't know why. The last time I was here was when I videotaped that salmon in the dark and the headlights in the quad. Nobody's here now in the, uh... There's a fair amount of river down there in the water. A fair amount of water. There's a fair amount of water down in the river right now. But it's fairly clear, so it means I can steelhead in there. Steelhead fish. But anyway, before I get distracted and want to go fishing, Let's get somebody else heard. All right. What's this one? Hello, my name is Pastor Blank Blank. If you should read this, please don't use my name. It's not that I'm ashamed, just nervous. Recently, while hunting, while hunting in South Nova Scotia on October 30th, I encountered some tracks that didn't make sense. These tracks were like a man's track, but no shoe or boot. If you look, you can see toes. In total, there are about six tracks, close to six feet per stride apart. I photographed them and used an unspent two and three quarter inch slug for scale. While near, I also heard a whooping sound, as well as tree knocks. Not sure what it was, but I didn't stick around. Thank you for your time in reading this. Found your work. God bless. All right, here we go. Here's another one. Now, let's see if all right, and the photographs are very hard. It's very hard to photograph prints in broad daylight. Very difficult. I've done it. I've taken a picture of what I can see as a clear print, put it online, and everybody sh shit themselves, freaked out to set us from a rock. <laughs> and I'll do this again to the lens of the camera. It's you can obviously you can tell it's a, it's a footprint, but I can't see clearly the toes myself. But I'm standing out here with dimming light. So let's have a look. I'm sure some of you are going to screenshot that. Let's go to the top half of the print. There's the slug. Bottom. Obviously it's some kind of a print, right? 
And there's no shortage of them, there's thousands of them. Thousands and thousands of prints. Thanks for sharing that. Appreciate it. And uh, if you come across knowledge that people can benefit from you, make sure you get it to us, all right? All right, one more. Let's see if we can get this done. Then I got to get in. Looks like it's fairly lengthy. Hey, Steve, love what you're doing. Keep up the good work. Feel free to use my name, Carl. Bryson, because I could care less what other people have to say or think about this. I've taken the time to proofread this and punctuate properly so you don't stumble over my words. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm going to stumble, <laughs> but thanks for that. I'm 57 years old and I've worked for the last 27 years as a computer programmer. I now do full-time video work for the same company. I've watched your channel for a few years now and have heard you share many great stories, some of which bear some resemblance to my encounter. I want to share my story with you, not because it's remarkable in any way, but more so because of where it happened. It seems that most of the emails you get are from the West Coast of the United States. I haven't heard too many stories from Northern Ontario, so I want to share it for this reason. Maybe others have had similar experiences in this area. Also, a lot of the stories, the stories you receive include definite, definitive encounters that leave little to no question about their experiences. But I'm sure there are also a lot of incidences that just can't be explained, and this is one of them. First, a little about myself. I've been a hobby musician for over 40 years and I've done a lot, a ton of work in sound recording. I feel this is important to mention here because when you record and produce music, you learn to understand how sound works in different environments. You spend your life working with the reverbs and delays, for example, to help shape sound and place sounds within a certain space. All this to say that after a while, you get pretty good at identifying the sounds you hear and the characteristics of those sounds. Because, believe me, after years of sharing this story, many people tried to convince me that what I heard was either a woodpecker, a jaw, branches in the wind, etc. Bottom line, they were not there to hear this. So now on to my story. My wife and I bought a cottage on Matagami Lake in June of 2000. Matagami Lake is located approximately 90 kilometers south of Timmins, Ontario, off of Highway 144 towards Sudbury. It's a water access college and all the lots in our area are in the 1.5 acre range. We've been spending all of our summers there ever since then. I also grew up spending all my summers at our family cottage since the age of five. So I'm no stranger to being surrounded by forest and I'm very familiar with the sounds of nature and wildlife that occupy our surrounding forests. As kids we used to wander off into the odd logging roads behind our cottage in the middle of the night with no flashlights and not a care in the world. We've never come across anything remotely scary, strange or unexplainable. Anyways, back to adulthood. One night about 10 years ago, my wife and I were out of a car cottage on an early spring weekend. I believe this is either late April or early May. The only other people around us that weekend were our neighbors two doors down on one side of us and my wife's parents three doors down on the other side of us. I know our neighbors well. They are in their 70s and they never wander around outside after dark, nor do my wife's parents. It's about 9.15 p.m. and getting dark fairly fast my wife and I are sitting by the fire at the back of her cottage facing the woods. The forest behind our cottage is vast and inhabited for many, many miles. I've included a photo to give you a sense of what it looks like. My wife decided to retire to bed around 9.20 p.m. and I stayed up by the fire as I often do. About 15 minutes after she went in for bed, I was sitting there quietly staring at the fire when I heard what sounded like three whacks a good distance behind the cottage. It's hard to say exactly how far it was because I wasn't sure what I had heard, but I estimate that it might have been somewhere between the half a kilometer to one kilometer straight back based on the trailing echo from the sound. I didn't pay much attention to it, but I did notice the sound and wondered about it for a minute or so. Another 10 to 15 minutes goes by and then I heard it again. Same thing, three whacks. But this time it's considerably closer and louder and there's a lot less echo as well, so this confirmed the distance had reduced from the first wax. So this time, I started trying to figure out what would be out there making this type of noise. It was too loud to be a woodpecker for sure. I, I know what they sound like. Even the large, pelated woodpeckers don't sound like that. Then I thought maybe a moose hitting his antlers against a tree, but at that time of year, they don't have their antlers yet. And besides, the three consistent wax seemed too well-timed and way too loud for that. 
I sat there for a good 15 minutes trying to figure out what the noise could be. Then after about 15 minutes, I heard the same free wax again, but this time it was really close, probably within several, several hundred feet. I immediately rose up out of my chair and my breathing got heavy really quickly. This wasn't making any sense to me. I had heard a single noise in between those wax for some one or something to be getting close at that rate they'd have to have made some sort of noise because the bush is pretty thick back there and it was pitch black by this time and there was no light to be seen coming back from there so now i'm standing by the fire at a pen-sized led flashlight with a couple of weak double a batteries it's not very bright i can barely see the tree line from the fire pit my other big flashlight was in the camp but those batteries were dead for having spent the winter in there and this is an off-grid camp so no power for lights unless I have my generator running, which I didn't. My first thought was to walk straight backwards to the cottage. I walked up three stairs to the edge of the deck, trying desperately to figure out what I was going to do about this. I thought about going to the garage and getting an axe, just in case I didn't want to get any further away from the cottage at this point. But I didn't want to get away from the cottage at this point. So I quietly and slowly walked along the deck towards the front of the cottage. I stopped there for a few minutes and listened for a bit then slowly walked back again towards the back of the cottage and stood there listening attentively. After a moment, the three wax came again, but now it's probably less than 100 feet away, right at the tree line, somewhere behind the fire pit. I immediately ran towards the front of the cottage, got in, and I locked the door, and made my way to the back bedroom looking out of the fire pit. I peeked my head out the window carefully and expected to see someone or something walking around back there. I, was absolutely, I saw absolutely nothing and didn't hear anything other than that point. It took me several hours to find sleep that night. My heart was still racing, my mind trying to figure out what the hell had just happened. I was about to wake up my wife to tell her what happened because I was so freaked out that she would have probably not slept through the night. I tried reproducing the sound the next day and it took a couple, a good solid branch, at least four to five inches in diameter and whacked against a tree pretty hard to make a similar sound. I wouldn't call this a tree knock. It's me. A tree knock is subdued compared to what this was. It was a loud whack. So all this to say that I don't have a definitive answer to what I heard, but I also can say with great certainty that it was nothing that I cannot, that I can't find an explanation for. All the research I've done on this leads me to one place. I've told the story to countless people, and I don't give a shit what anyone thinks about me or for that matter. I know what sounds I heard that night, but I still don't know what made them. Not knowing any better, I lit at a later date, I contacted the BFRO, bracket, useless, and bracket, via email to share my story. Someone there called me to ask me a few questions. I distinctively could recall him asking me if I believed in Bigfoot. My answer was that I didn't believe or disbelieve, because I had no experience that could definitively, definitively, <laughs> definitively offer proof. Not long after, he said to go, he said, he had to go, but that he would call me back, and he never did. Something else happened out there a few years later, but I was not alone this time. At least 10 of us were out there that night and heard blood-curdling scream from a few hundred yards away. Everyone stopped talking immediately, and we all looked at each other, wondering what the hell that was. Soon after, the same type of scream could be heard way back in the forest as we were answering the first scream. I scoured the internet listening to all kinds of animal sounds and screams, and nothing comes close to what we heard, what we all heard. It was a long scream that lasted at least five to six seconds. It started in a low pitch and gradually got louder and higher pitched. The last part of the scream sounded like a woman screaming at the top of her lungs, which very chilling. And yes, I've heard cougar screams, but the tone and range just doesn't compare to this. I'm so glad I was not alone for that one. Anyway, thanks for listening. Hope you find the time to share this one, since it may give someone else from Northern Ontario get someone else from Northern Ontario to share their own story. Cheers, keep up the good work. Carl Bryson. Carl, thanks for that, man. And uh, I'm surprised you haven't heard much from Northern Ontario because we've heard a lot. There's a lot of encounters, experiences come from Ontario, big time. Uh, same thing, I'll hold that photograph up for you guys. You see right there. So you can see it's pretty remote, goes on forever, and there's the direction that he heard the sounds coming from in that timber, right? And uh, 
you say you don't know what it was, but you emailed us here. So that basically tells us right away that you know what it was. Every single person out there that has a crazy ass, weird experience they don't have the answer for, and it it drives them freaking crazy. And they end up emailing all of us here. Uh, by the time you've typed in the email, the two email address, you already know what it was. It's an amazing topic. I just noticed down there all the leaves are gone. So all of the willow that surrounds that bend in the river behind me. I'm going to go back down there when I get a chance soon. And I'm going to stand exactly where I took that photograph of that bear with that big black face peeking out of the bushes about, I don't know, it looks like it was about seven feet taller than the bear. Because I took another picture of that spot later on and it wasn't there. I never knew what it was. But uh, what the hell, I can do that myself. So I'm going to go down there now that all the leaves are gone, then we will really be able to see if there is a black stump hidden in those bushes that just got revealed for a few seconds in that video, which I took the still from, right? Then uh, I'm not, I, I haven't even unpacked my other pickup truck yet with <laughs> my stuff and traveling from down from up north. So I got to get that done tomorrow. I really got to go, get going on my stalls and my barn and get caught up on a bunch of this. But uh, one thing that's on my mind that I really want to get done for everybody, and especially the person that sent it to me, is the law officer who sent me the videotape broad daylight of that big, large, upright being in the riverbed, in the water. And all I gotta do is get it stabilized up, email him back, see if they've got their short little clip of a human being standing up there for me to add on the video, which would be superb. And then I'll get that shared with the world because he shared all of us to finally share it with. It's never been shared ever before, and um, it's 100% a very large, black, upright being in the river. Broad daylight. So, uh, I know I've mentioned that video clip before, and um, obviously I've been away for, what, a month? <laughs> and now I'm back, and you guys know that I have a bunch of shit I gotta catch up on, but that is one of my top priorities, is to get that video clip um, stabilized and then I will get it straight to you as soon as I get that done all right there's no secrets here nothing's held back here as you know unless somebody asks me for respect to respect their their request of me not sharing publicly what they want to share with me it is what it is it happens fairly often and I don't give a shit what anybody says you give somebody your word you go against that you are nothing all right if you can't understand that I feel sorry for your ass. Anyway. Time to go. I'll get a lot more shares out regularly and uh, very soon. There's a lot of people that need to be heard. A lot of people need to get the shit off their chest. And a lot of people need their respect back. And this is where they're getting it back. See you soon.